Welcome to Dielectric Videos. This is an update on my deuterium enrichment project that I showed you about a week and a half ago initially. Now as you can see, uh, this project was kind of a failure uh, ultimately, but uh, I did not, uh, it wasn't a complete failure because I did learn quite a few things about electrolysis. Now interestingly, for about the first four or five days, this uh, electrolysis went perfectly. The water stayed crystal clear. Uh, I was generating a lot of water vapor, so I added this condensation uh, vapor capture tube to this, and that worked really well. However, after I left the solution over the weekend, uh, the coolant bath level went down considerably, and I suspect this, that the system overheated and uh, resulted in the uh, destruction of the positive anode plate of stainless steel. Now when I got here, it was uh, obviously in a terrible condition, and this is actually not how I found it. It had about three inches deep of this oxide material. Now last night I went through and um, I filtered off the uh, precipitate and then took a Brillo pad and scrubbed the oxide off of the anode all the way down to the metal. Now when I powered it back on, it worked, but it was only pulling about 2.8 amps versus the uh, a little over six amps that I measured shortly after filming the last video. Uh, I left it overnight and unfortunately once again it created more of this uh, crud so I've turned the power off and shut it down. Now what I suspect has happened is uh, pitting corrosion has struck on the um, on the stainless steel and after doing some research I've determined that uh, to make a viable steel or stainless steel electrode uh, electrolysis system in sodium hydroxide you have to actually keep the over potential extremely low. Now what that means is since the uh, electric potential of a hydrogen oxygen cell is approximately 1.23 volts really you should only be a few tenths of a volt over that uh, in terms of the power supplied to it. Now I supplied this system with 12 volts because I needed to get the current quite high in order to produce the amount of gas I wanted to. If I wanted to do it properly, however, I would have to keep the current per plate area extremely low and just have much, much more plate area. Now here's the second problem that I've run into, and this is more of a logistical problem. Uh, stainless steel contains chromium, and this oxide and this uh, yellowish solution that has formed is going to be very rich in hexavalent chromium. Now hexavalent chromium, which is a six electron deficient uh, cation of chromium, is quite toxic. It's uh, highly genotoxic, which means it's a carcinogen, and it's also a very serious environmental threat uh, if you pour it down the drain or end up putting it in a landfill. So what I'm going to end up having to do is uh, evaporate down this solution into a uh, concentrate and take it to a hazardous waste recycling center where they can either recover the chromium from it or simply uh, encapsulate it and then take it to a safe storage location. Now uh, this project has not been a complete failure in that I've learned a lot about how to construct effective electrolysis chambers and I've learned the mistakes that one can make. If I wanted to do this uh, with a very, very long-term operation in mind, I would probably want to invest in some platinum electrodes. Those would tolerate a much greater over-voltage. Uh, over or additionally, I could consider using regular steel, not stainless steel, but only running at a few tenths of a volt over the standard potential of the hydrogen-oxygen cell. Now, uh, as you can see, I have given it uh, my best go. I've, I've tried it a second time and it's still built up this oxide uh, from the anode rod. So I'm going to be shutting this down for now. Uh, I may still uh, continue, uh, I may come up with a different design and implement that in a future video. But for now, since I've learned a few things about electrolysis, I'll take them and then hopefully apply them uh, later on in my, uh, in my career if I have to ever consult on something uh, regarding the electrolysis of water. So I might make another video in the future, but that's probably going to be a ways away since before I start another video, I'm going to have to figure out how to dispose of this hexavalent chromium. So thank you for watching Dielectric Videos, and I will see you next time.